Welcome, my friends. Here we are on another cheap ass beer review with Dr. Dave. Uh, just remember, because it's a cheap ass beer, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad tasting beer. It just means it's inexpensive. Ah, so for today's selection, we have one of my favorite beers from years past. Now I have it in a freezer sleeve. I always keep cheap ass beers in a freezer sleeve. Oh, you got to keep these beers cold. Oh, this is ice cold. This is Heineken. Oh, I love this beer, but I haven't uh, been a regular drinker of Heineken in probably 25 years or so. Oh, yeah. Uh, I used to go to work, and when I got off work, I'd go to the bar, and uh, we were known as the Heineken Club because all of, of our uh, workers, all the co-workers I had, we all had Heineken. So the, uh, <laughs> the owner of the bar would keep them in ice. Yeah, that's back in the days before I, be, I was educated on, on beer and what to do and what not to do. Yeah, we like those ice-cold Heinekens, baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, uh, don't ask me to pronounce the name of the city that this is brewed in. It's in the Netherlands, and that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, because I would not get that pronunciation of that name correct at all. It does check in at 5% alcohol by volume, and according to the date stamp on the bottom, we should consume it before April of 2022. And here we are in August. I believe this has a one-year shelf life from the uh, brewer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get my little pry tool. And I'm going to put it over here so we don't make any messes around the electronics, right? Crack it very slowly. And put it back over on this side. There you go. Now, for the occasion, we have Dr. Dave's Cheap-Ass Beer Review Glassware. I don't know if you can quite read that. If you look carefully enough, you can see the printing on there, but I like the cartoon character. All right, so we have a 24-ounce can here, which, by the way, I went to Walmart, and this is my most expensive cheap-ass beer to date. This was $2.09 for a 24-ounce can. Which, to me, is still a cheap-ass beer, because if you do the math on that, you've got 24 ounces for 209 so that breaks down to, what, it, roughly a dollar and five cents per serving, a little bit less. Beautiful, light golden color, and look at the lively carbonation. you got a bright white head on there. Um, I haven't had this for years, and I've never had it in a can. I've had it on tap several times, which is quite good. And from those green bottles, which I don't recommend anybody drink from a green bottle. Now, Heineken, in interestingly, covers most of its multi-packs. As a matter of fact, they cover all their multi-packs completely with cardboard. So in that instance, bottles would be acceptable because they never are light struck. The only thing you have to worry about is how much they're exposed to heat and cold, which is difficult to control. It really is unless you're shipping the beer in climate controlled trucks, which would be prohibitively expensive, no doubt. All right, since I've run my mouth, the head has gone down a little bit. Let's go ahead and top it off. Yeah, there you are. Perfect, baby. All right, let's go ahead and see what kind of aroma we have on this. A little bit of malt and grain in there. I don't get a lot, and that could be because it is very cold. And this glass is cold in my hand. So let's go ahead and drink it. Let's thank the Brewers in Netherlands, which is one of the largest breweries in the entire world. And to my knowledge, they are a standalone brewery. What I mean by that is they have not merged or been bought by anyone. You know, a lot of the a lot of the breweries around the world have been bought by AB InBev or, or one of the other conglomerates, uh, Molson Coors. As far as I know, Heineken is a standalone brewery. So cheers to them. Cheers to you too. That tastes just the, re the way I remember it. Yeah, it's, just, it's a very cold, refreshing beer. It has very light malt to it. Very light malt. In my opinion, there's nothing offensive about this beer. Now, again, this beer, almost like any other inexpensive beer, although this is considered a premium beer, 
if you allow it to warm too much, it becomes undrinkable. Now, I'm not going to sit here and turn off the camera and come back in 15 minutes because I, I want to have fond memories of this beer. But I know from experience, uh, you know, after you've had four, five, six, or seven <laughs> in my younger days, yeah, you start to let that beer sit around and then you don't quite drink it as quickly. And then you, oh, what the hell is that? I don't want that. Give me another one. Give me a cold one. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really not good to allow any beer to warm up, but particularly beers that have, how shall we say, less than stellar ingredients. And I'm not saying this beer has less than stellar ingredients, but I'm talking in overall, in a general way. Yeah, cheers. There's nothing wrong with this beer at all. It has a slightly sweet presence in there, slightly sweet. And I don't believe that this is brewed with, uh, oh, I know there's not any high fructose corn syrup, but I don't believe there's any corn syrup in here at all. I don't think there's any dextrose or maltose or anything like that. Now, I didn't read the can thoroughly, but a company like this, uh, to get where they are today, I just don't believe that they use inferior ingredients uh, much in the way that AB InBev does. Not so much Anheuser-Busch, but more along the lines of what was uh, InBev. Yeah, InBev was uh, Interbrew, and then you had, um, what was the other one, Am AmBev? Uh, Mer yeah, I can't remember all those names precisely, but, but there were a lot of mergers along the way. And when uh, Interbrew took over or really merged with Anheuser-Busch, you know, all they do is economies of scale. They look for ways to cut costs. That's all they do. So, yeah, instead of using hops, they use hop extract. Whatever the hell that is, hop extract, what the hell is that? Even in the few minutes I've sat here, and this has been in my hand with heat transfer and it's warmed up, it's still a quite decent beer. I'm going to have to rate this at the top of the heap. This this is a five-star beer to me. There's nothing wrong with this beer. It's a perfect thirst quencher on a warm day. Yeah, I'm not going to say it's a lawnmower beer because I'm not going to insult Heineken. No. Now, as far as the cost goes, I jotted down here. I was at my local grocery store. My local grocery store wanted $20.99 for an 18-pack. But then I was at Walmart later that week, and I saw $18.49 for the same 18-pack. Now, this is 12-ounce bottles, 18-pack of 12-ounce bottles. I have never seen multi-packs of Heineken cans in this region. It's only sold in bottles. Now, you can buy the 24-ounce cans, but I've never seen a six pack or a 12 pack or any other pack of cans. So let's do the math here at Walmart. Remember you always take the price, which is 18.49 and you divide it by the number, you divide it by the quantity, which in this case is 18. So that's gonna give us a dollar, okay, round it up to a dollar three. So that's a cheap ass beer. You get a 12 ounce bottle of beer for a dollar three, that's a cheap ass beer. But it's a good quality beer. It's a good quality beer, and I highly recommend, if you've never tried a Heineken, man, you're missing out. This is a good quality beer. Remember, just, just keep it cold. Don't, don't, let, don't let this beer or any beer, uh, unless, it's a, uh, unless you're drinking a high-quality craft beer and you're drinking a barley wine or you're drinking a, a, a double IPA, you, you can let those warm up. They're, they're intended to get warm, but not this kind of beer. All right, Dr. Dave says, life is short. Drink whatever the hell you want. Whatever makes you happy, baby. No doubt. So we meet next time. Here's wishing all of you the very best of goodbyes. And as always, cheers.